It's so exciting to see you all here. Um, this is a rare day for Hawaii when we have so many important programs to help your company. But I hope that the, we have so many programs, I hope that you'll find something that will benefit your company. And I'm sure everybody will. We have a lot of great speakers, many of them who flew over from Oahu. So thank you to them. Yeah, go ahead and clap. Yeah. And um, I'm sorry it's so hot in here. Usually in the county buildings, you're absolutely freezing. But for some reason, they decided to make it hot. So I hope you all stay awake in all the heat. Um, what's that? It feels nice to me. Uh, <laughs> usually I'm freezing. And so for me to be hot, that's something new. So. Actually, we're going to get started with the um, Department of Business and Economic Development. And Jamie Lum is going to be talking about two programs that DBED offered. So if you want to just, okay. Yeah. Oh, so for the speakers oh, who are here, here. Okay. if you can just stand okay. right here so sure. people can see you, it's close enough to the. Okay. Aloha everyone, good to be with all of you today. I'm Jamie Lum and I'm with the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, um, specifically in the Business Development and Support Division. Um, you see up there, it says Mark Ritchie. So my colleague is actually on Zoom um, and um, he'll be on in case I um, skip over something that's important to the program. Um, so he's the other uh, branch chief and he's, the head of our business support and I'm the head of our business development. So our division um, has programs that help uh, really um, to help build industries and uh, promote industry development and diversification. Um, I don't have a slide for this, <laughs> but um, so ways that we do this is we help, um, you'll hear about two of our programs that help really um, support companies, help them grow, um, um, particularly uh, community-based businesses and organizations. Um, then we also have um, an export development um, program to help uh, companies that have Hawaii-made products and services sell globally. Um, we, also, um, we also deal with the defense industry. So that's another uh, part of what we do in terms of um, businesses and industries we support. We also have some other um, international programs that we oversee. So our division also, um, uh, we are uh, the stewards, if you if you want to put it that way, of our sister state relationships between um, the state of Hawaii and prefectures in Japan and um, and um, also in China, um, Philippines, all over the world. But these are these are prefectures and provinces to the state. We know that the county has um, sister city relationships, and so we use those to also help. Um, with economic development, not just, a lot of it is uh, started with cultural ties and, and kind of you know, goodwill. A lot of people have come from those areas, uh, but we use the programs um, to really help to um, encourage um, business opportunities between the two sides. So the first uh, program that I wanna talk about is our Seabed Loan Program. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so the Seabed overall, the Seabed Program, really consists of loans and grants and technical assistance to help small businesses. And um, really uh, what we're trying to do is um, develop sus uh, viable, sustainable um, ventures in, um, in the local, at the community level, really that's, com that's compatible with what the particular community um, needs are. And um, that's really in line with the character and the values of that community. So that's kind of overall the seabed program. The specific um, program um, that we want to talk about is our seabed loan program. Next slide, please. So um, the loan program, um, we focus on businesses um, that are in manufacturing, wholesaling, and value-added agricultural processes. Um, these are loans that are intended to expand your business. Um, the, Loans normally range from fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars, but I think we've gone a, a, a little higher than a hundred thousand. Um, 
interest rates um, range from three to six percent uh, with up to a 10 year term. And um, we do this uh, through a co-lending arrangement that we have with several other um, partners. Um, I know we've worked with our Hawaii Department of Agriculture, with uh, Feed the Hunger Fund, um, with I think um, uh, uh, CNHA, um, the Waianae, um, they're on Oahu, the Waianae um, Economic Development Council. So those are some of the co-lending partners that we have. Um, one of the requirements is that you have to have uh, one commercial uh, loan turned down. So that is a requirement um, in order to qualify for this program. Next slide. So these are some of, uh, th this is what the, the loan can be used for. It can be used for uh, working capital, uh, construction or improvement of facilities, purchase of equipment, and payment of production and marketing expenses. So, if you are interested in this loan um, program, you do list the web website there. I also have brochures outside, um, and I have my business card out there. But um, the first step would be is we have a loan interest form. Um, that's so that you don't have to go through. So it's it's a fairly simple form. Uh, basically to indicate that you're interested in this and then um, uh, Mark or, or someone from our staff will set up a meeting with you um, to make sure that it, it's a good fit for you. Um, that way you don't have to go through you know, a whole loan form and provide all of your financials and those kinds of things that you will have to provide if you actually do apply for the loan. So it would start with the loan interest form um, if that's something that you're interested in. So again, you can go to our website for more information about it. And also you can pick up a brochure outside and see that one for them. I don't know if I, um, should I ask Mark if he has- Mark, Mark, anything? do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I think that's a, a very good presentation. Thank you very much, Jamie. And we right now just have one loan on Kauai with the company and we'd love to do uh, more loans there. And we can do those loans either on our own, or as Jamie mentioned, we have co-lending partners uh, who include uh, Feed the Hunger Fund, the Hawaii State Department of Ag, um, the Waianae Economic Development Council, and also the Hawaii Community Reinvestment Corp. We've done loans with all of them. And I think the first place, as Jamie mentioned, to go to is the loan interest form. And there we just ask you, just about your situation, kind of how much revenue, how much you're looking for, what it'd be used for, and then what type of company you are. And then that gives us enough information that we can have a conversation with you. And if it's not right for us, what we will try to do is refer you on to other lenders who may uh, fit your needs a bit better or be a better fit. So um, that's uh, the where I would go after you uh, kind of look at maybe the brochure that Jamie mentioned or our website. So thank you very much, Mahalo. Great. I should have said at the beginning that um, don't worry about scrambling, writing down all these telephone numbers and email addresses, because I'll make all of these presentations available to everybody in PDF form on a shared folder later. So don't uh, stress about these addresses and things. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, um, Mark. So then next, um, if you can go to the enterprise zones. Um, next, um, I wanna talk about our um, enterprise zone program. Um, so this is a state program. Um, later I'll, um, Nate Prescott with the county is your Hawaii County um, EZ coordinator. Um, but the next slide please. Yep. Again, this is a, a, a program that Mark oversees. Um, and basically what it is, it's um, that you get certain tax breaks in exchange for job creation. Um, and and uh, these uh, economic, uh, I'm sorry, enterprise zones are basically determined by census uh, data based on, um, uh, so we're looking at trying to um, create um, economic opportunities and jobs in economically challenged areas. So um, if you locate your company in, in enterprise zones, you could be eligible for certain um, uh, tax, tax incentives. 
Um, so as it says there, that you have to meet the eligibility requirements in the program. So yeah, most of the participants are manufacturers or wholesalers or in um, egg production. Um, and then you can get the benefits for up to seven years. Um, next slide. The next slide shows um, the eligible business activities. One of the things I do want to point out is one area that I know um, is not eligible is retail. So there are a number of different um, there is ag production, manufacturing, wholesaling, and then certain types of industries. You'll see there the uh, biotech research, aviation, maritime, telecommunications. So, you know, so um, it, it's it's specific in the types of businesses that it can help. But um, again, if you fit into one of these categories, it can help you with, um, with uh, giving you tax um, tax breaks uh, for up to seven years. Let's. So this is a map of all the um, enterprise zones um, throughout the state, the orange, uh, red color. So you, you can see where, um, where it is. On the yeah, so basically, I guess, wherever it's populated. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I guess I what I should also point out is that, um, well, I, I'll call on Nate after, because the state has certain benefits, but sometimes the county has some additional benefits. Um, so if you can go to the next slide. Um, so here are what the benefits are. So you see that the 100% exemption from G tax and use tax every year. Um, it you know, goes into, gives more detail. Um, applies only to gross revenue, an easy eligible business start category. Um, and then 80% reduction of state income tax the first year. And then um, with each year you're in the program, then it goes down 80%, 70%. All the way to the end of your seven years, you see that. Um, and then it says an additional income tax reduction equal to 80% of annual unemployment insurance for, for the first year. And that also goes down as well. I also have a brochure for this program. Um, in addition to, of course, it's on our website, but there are brochures on the outside. Um, next slide, please. So, um, but in order to stay eligible, you do have to um, increase, there has to be an increase um, in the number of employees. So there's an example here. Um, so it says a new business that starts with 10 employees, so in year one, you have to increase it by 10%. You have to hire one employee. But as long as you maintain that, the 11 employees for the seven years, you'll still be eligible. I think per speaker is probably better. If, yeah. if you have questions, ask per speaker. Um, we have question. Okay. So my question is, so you use the example of 11. Say you're a company of two people. Do you still qualify for enterprise zone if you're a manufacturer? Um, I would turn that to Mark. Yeah, right there. Uh, yes. Uh, in order to join the program, you have to have at least one employee. And then from one to nine, we don't do uh, partial. So if you have one person, you're expected to have two people then to be able to take the tax benefits in any one year. And every year, we have an online form that you fill out, letting us know what your employee level is. And then DBID's role is to certify that you've met the requirements of the program and that you can take the tax benefits. And we give you uh, a letter that says that, that you can put in your tax file. And then there's an actual easy uh, DOE tax form just for enterprise zones. Um, Mark, if a company doesn't meet the requirement in one year, in a particular year, uh, we can't certify them, then what happens? They're still in the program. It just means that that year, they're not eligible to take the benefits. So when they go do their taxes for 2023, they can't take the benefits. But then in 2024, again, if they do their uh, end of year report with us, and let's say they meet the requirements, then in that year, it picks up again. Okay. So, in But the it maintains the same schedule uh, for like the decline in the, the tax credit and the unemployment insurance uh, credit. I see. Did everybody hear that? 
So yeah, if you don't qualify in a certain year, then you don't qualify for the tax benefits. And then in the next year, hopefully you would qualify to be able to have the tax benefits. So. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask Nate if he wanted to um, talk about the county program, if there's any um, additional benefits in Kauai County um, for easy for the easy program here. Uh, I don't think we have additional benefits, but I will help you all the way through the process and be there to help you and we get it done as quick as possible. I think that's like uh, a question. Yes. Yes, it applies to existing businesses. Um, if you're not currently in an easy, yeah. So like we saw on the map, most of the <laughs> most of the areas of what you do. Yeah, but most of Kauai, it's where they're, it's populated. Right. It's just oh, kind yeah. of- You don't have to be a brand new business. Right, no. Please. No, what, what that actually meant, and we tried to keep the slides very simple, is there's actually two categories. One's called the existing business and one called the new business. What that means is, that your business started after the enterprise zone was designated. And all these designations came out of the early 90s. So if you started your business after that, uh, you'll be considered a new business. If let's say you were a business back from the 80s and the enterprise zone was literally drawn under your business, then you would be considered an existing business. And then the job numbers are just a little bit more uh, elevated a little bit more. In other words, it's a little more arduous to sort of meet those numbers. And we didn't put that that up because most of the companies that actually joined the program uh, have started since you know the the early '90s. And maybe I could just add one last thing that the Enterprise Zone program it's it, it's really designed for job creation in economically challenged areas and to stimulate certain types of business activity, meaning, you know, those industries. And this is all, you know, legislative, you know, in, in statute and things. So the, the perfect time to join the Enterprise Zone program would be uh, when you're expanding and adding jobs, and also when you're beginning to actually owe a lot of state taxes, because it's the, the tax credit is only on the amount of money that you owe the state. So it's called non, uh, non-reimbursable. So it, it so it's only if you, let's say you owe the state $1,000 after you do your taxes, you're gonna get $800 of that back the first year if you're in the program. But if, you, if you're if you in the red, this program doesn't help you. So it's good a good program for kind of successful businesses that actually start owing the state money and actually are just starting to expand and create jobs. Thank you. Does anybody have any other any questions about either one, the CBAB loan program, the enterprise loan program? So I have a question. Sorry, I have so many questions. Oops. But um, <clears throat> Mark, how many Kauai companies are in the easy program currently? Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna guesstimate. I'll be very close within you know a couple, uh, and it's just because every year we have at different times during the year, uh, companies are graduating from the program. They're in you know, the seven years, and then we also have companies enrolling. But usually, Kauai, we usually have around twenty at any given time. And I just asked that question so that you guys know it's not impossible to do. So <clears throat> just want to encourage you, your hiring employees to think about it. Yes, yes, yeah. And chances are wherever you're located, you will be, if you're on Kauai, you will be in an enterprise zone. It gets a little more tricky on Oahu because uh, they've lost some of their census. The, the, the zones actually, they've lost 20 years and then the counties redesignate them, but they're always using the most recent census tract data. So uh, in the future designations, they're going to be using 2020 data. And we've actually, in prior redesignations, like Kapolei's lost some of its uh, enterprise zone and things because some areas are becoming, uh, you know, a bit wealthier. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, that's a good thing. That's what we want. Is uh, High Step next? Yeah. Thank you very much, Jamie. I'm gonna you're gonna be our PR person for the programs. Thank you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um did you want um 
We want to deepen it in our views. Oh, okay. If you want. Okay. Well, I think we should do this one. Oh, okay. Then you'll talk. Yeah. Talk. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So uh, the, the next program that I, I want to talk about is our uh, Hawaii State Trade Expansion Program or High Step. Um, so um, we've been receiving annually through this uh, Small Business Administration a grant um, uh, to help support this high step program. Um, and what it does it is a, it's an export development program, and it's designed to help um, companies that have Hawaii-made products or services to sell their products and services globally. Um, um, when when we say um, export, we are talking specifically about outside of the U.S. So um, if you are looking at selling your product uh, or services um, on the mainland, this program does not apply. Uh, however, there are some activities that are done in the U.S., but I'll explain that later. Um, so these are um, our high step partners. Um, we work with a number of different organizations, as you can see, um, that help the companies that come into the program. Um, so I have uh, Rob Hack, who is with the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, is with me today, and he'll speak a little bit more later about HPEC. And um, Rob also, um, his day job is he is a, a, a consultant um, for companies that are interested in um, exporting. So, um, so he's done a lot of international business. He lived in Asia for many, many years. Um, we also have um, Wayne and Cindy here and they're with um, with Innovate Hawaii um, and they've um, been helpful to companies. Well, they'll talk about their programs, but um, one of the issues is, is if you are um, a, a manufacturer and you're looking at exporting, uh, you may need to ramp up your production in order to meet demand of your, um, you know, as you're selling more product outside um, internationally. So um, they can help you with that. So um, again, a number of organizations, SBDC has been very helpful in helping companies, um, not only in exporting, but sometimes companies may sign up for the program and maybe um, they want to export, but maybe not quite ready. And um, so SBDC can also help kind of look at that and see, are you even ready for exporting? Maybe there are some other um, aspects uh, within your business that you might need to strengthen um, before you want to start selling outside internationally. So let's go to them. So um, basically with the program, what we're looking to do is we want to um, expand um, the dollar amount, so the revenues to Hawaii of, and Hawaii companies of their exports, right? And then we want to increase the number of companies, period, that are exporting. And then lastly, we want to um, penetrate new markets with Hawaii-made products and services. So those are the um, metrics, basically, that we are looking at um, with the program. Um, to be eligible for the program, um, you have to meet federal definition of an eligible small business, which uh, by SBA standards just means, means that um, you have less than 500 employees. So <laughs> that sounds like a large company, right? And in Hawaii, pretty much 98%, maybe something like that, of the companies would fit that definition. Um, there are also other requirements. You have to be in business at least for a year. Um, you have to, and there's a self-certification form that just says that you have the resources available for exporting. Um, and then um, the other uh, important thing is your product or service has to be at least, by SBA standards, at least 51% U.S. made. For Hawaii, we are looking to support, you know, our made in Hawaii companies. So um, there's a, there is a portion in the registration form where you would put in some um, costs to figure out what that percentage, percentage is, comes out to for your product. Um, services are worked a little bit differently, but so as long as you meet the 51%. Um, we say we give preference. Um, we have had some companies that maybe quite have been a little bit under the 51%, but as long as it's been um, a US made product, then they can participate. 
Um, you also have to certify that you're not barred from receiving federal funds. You have to be registered with DCCA uh, and you have to have a GE tax number. So those are the basic um, eligibility requirements for high step. So um, the components of high step, we have our what we call our export readiness component. Um, basically gearing you up or gearing companies up for exporting. If you don't have an export plan, it's so that you can gain information, uh, gain knowledge to put a plan together. And then also, um, well, I'll go into the, uh, a little bit in more detail a little later. Um, another component is we've just kind of renamed this. I, I, I know we have to think of a better um, term. We used to call it Hawaii Pavilions because we were talking solely about trade shows. But um, what we're calling it now is market entry and expansion activity. So basically trade shows, uh, consumer shows, um, and then uh, we started um, uh, doing some pilot programs with e-commerce platforms, specifically in the Japanese market. So that's what that's our market entry um, activities. And then finally, we have our high step company assistance, which is um, where companies can apply for um, direct uh, financial assistance to help support all of their export activities. Um, so just um, try, uh, going over this uh, briefly. So this is actually part of our export readiness. We do uh, monthly sessions on different topics. Um, uh, this one is we trying to make, we're trying to make it specific to Kauai, but we've done a number of topics. Um, we've done um, a Logistics, we have one coming up um, next month on export financing. We just did one um, using the American Chambers of Commerce and the Commercial Service. Um, we've done country-specific programs like Japan. Uh, we had a good one on Canada a couple of uh, months ago. We had a very recent one on exporting to Vietnam. So the topics change every year. There's a few year by year that are basically the same because so many people are interested in Japan, we do Japan every year, but then we mix it up. And I think uh, some of you would probably benefit from the upcoming one on export finance. And Rob is, is the uh, an HPEC. Uh, we engage them to help us put this whole program together. So, um, so thanks to Rob. Um, and then also part of the export readiness is when you register for High Step, and what we do is we, um, match you up with one of our partner organizations. So for most Hawaii businesses, we would refer you to uh, Robbie um, to have um, a one-on-one -on -one consultation, at least one session to talk a little bit about your company, uh, to find out um, where you're at in terms of exporting. Are you new to export? Uh, are you just thinking about it? Have you been exporting already and you're looking at going into a new market or something like that? So the, the program is open to all levels of companies, um, new to export all the way to what they call um, market expansion or those that are um, already experienced exporters. Um, and then hopefully through the series of, of webinars and seminars and talking with um, our partner organizations, then if you don't have an export plan, um, then you would have the, the, the tools needed to put one together. Um, Rob has even done sessions on putting an export plan together. And um, he can talk about, um, they have a library of uh, resources and of all the, the different um, seminars that have been done over the years. So um, he did a, a two part actually last year, very kind of intensive <laughs> workshop uh, for doing an export plan. Um, and then um, if you already have an export plan, then it might be a, a way of you revisiting it and maybe um, refining it um, uh, through maybe some of the information that you've received. So that's our export readiness. We're trying to, just as the name says, build a pipeline of way companies that to get them into the um, exporting next round. Thank you. Um, so as I, I started to mention, so our market entry and expansion activities, we do a number of trade shows. Uh, DBED organizes some and our Department of Agriculture also um, organizes a number of uh, um, trade shows where we have a Hawaii pavilion. So we purchase the space and we subsidize the majority of the cost for the trade show. And then we go out and re we recruit companies to come and be part of this Hawaii pavilion. Um, so 
um, like I said, the, the costs of the show are, are subsidized. We do charge a, a small fee. Um, probably what it would, it would be maybe, um, I would say about a quarter of the cost of what it would be if you went into the show on your own. So for instance, we have the Tokyo International Gift Show coming up in Tokyo in, um, in September. Um, and, um, you know, if you were to purchase the space and do your own build out and um, get the materials you needed for, um, to decorate your booth, et cetera, um, the equipment and signage, it can be like $10,000, but I think we're charging 1500 for a full booth and 750 for half a booth. And that's the other um, advantage is that um, we've arranged with these trade shows that companies can share a booth. So it, that can help reduce your costs. And that's actually one of the main reasons um, um, advantages we feel to the program is that, especially for smaller companies, it makes it affordable to be in these large um, international trade shows. And, um, and then it's also an advantage to kind of be a, under the Hawaii um, brand in the Hawaii Pavilion with um, companies. Um, even though sometimes there are competitors, a lot of the companies really find that um, they um, can share experiences with each other on you know, exporting and, and so forth. So, um, so trade shows, one of the activities. Um, right, the consumer shows right now, we have one that we've um, been um, supporting the last few years and that's with the Hong um, Kong Fair um, department store, uh, Hong Kong department store um, in Osaka, Japan. So as you can see, there are 150,000 to 200, um, thousand consumers that come in and it's a six day long event. So this one, as opposed to trade shows, which you're meeting buyers, distributors, so you're not selling product on the show. The consumer show, um, you would be selling product and it's kind of, it's a way um, to be able to get some feedback from the Japanese consumers um, on your, how your market, how, it, how your product may do in, in the market. So um, a lot of companies have learned things about uh, maybe the, the packaging needs to be changed. Maybe the size that they're offering, maybe they need to make it um, a package it smaller or, you know. So it's also, uh, it helps to um, give companies um, some direct feedback on their product and how it can be in, in this case in the Japanese market. So we're looking to, to do some um, other types of consumer shows um, this in next year. Um, Granted that we get more funds from SBA. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, yeah. and then the last. Um, uh, oh, here's a. Here's just a calendar of the, the shows that we've done. So um, we've ar we already did several. Um, I mentioned that um, high step is only for um, uh, selling abroad, right? If you but you'll see that we did a natural product that's Expo West in Anaheim, California. Well, that is an international show, even though it's in the US. So there are a lot of international buyers there. So um, you can um, go to a, a US trade show, a domestic trade show, as long as there are international buyers in that attend. Um, okay, next. Um, and then, um, this past year, uh, we introduced um, um, two e-commerce platforms. We're still kind of working on it, and we may um, look at some other other platforms. But um, especially during the pandemic, when people couldn't, when you know, we couldn't travel, when there were no trade shows, um, a lot of companies depended on um, e-commerce to sell their products directly to consumers. So uh, we're looking for just more ways of helping Hawaii companies to reach um, the in this case, the Japanese consumers. And we'll start with this and we'll see how, you know, um, because as Rob mentioned, I would say, you know, probably 95% of the companies that come into high step um, are interested in the Japan market. So that's why a lot of our activities are so focused on the Japanese market. Next. Um, and then finally, uh, our company assistance um, program, as I said, we have two categories of companies um, need to export for market expansion. So companies can actually apply to us for uh, money to help support um, activities that they may want to um, take part in to help with their exporting. Um, that's why um, an export plan is, is important because actually 
in evaluating your um, application, uh, there is an evaluation committee and they will look at your uh, your uh, export plan. Probably um, half of the points are determined on your export plan to make sure that you know you've thought through um, you know what market you want to get into, uh, how you're going to get into it, what kind of competition you might have there. Um, um, you know, how you plan to um, go about selling your, your, your uh, product or service there. So for a new to export company, you can apply for up to $5,000. For a market expansion company, you can apply for up to $15,000. Uh, for market expansion companies, we have an additional um, requirement that you have at least $200,000 in revenues um, to apply. And the reason for that is, um, you know, Exporting can be expensive. Um, it, it does take resources um, to really um, consistently pursue a uh, market or markets. Um, so we want to make sure that a company has you know sufficient um, uh, financial resources to be able to um, support their efforts going forward. Um, so normally, what we do is we issue a request for proposal for this. Um, the time table of it is. We normally put it out in November because we'll be notified by the end of September whether or not we get another grant from SBA. So we spend October kind of gearing up. Um, we'll put out uh, RFP in November and then the deadline is uh, right after the new year. I know for a lot of companies, that's such a busy time, but um, that way you have the advantage of using the funds for the whole calendar year. Um, and then the last point there, it says it's, um, it's if you receive it, receive an award, it's on a reimbursement basis. So you actually have to pay money and then you submit um, supporting documents to us to show um, you know, what, what expenses were paid. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I'll go over um, some of the kinds of um, expenses that the funds can be used for. So we talked about e-commerce. So e-commerce and website expenses, particularly translating your um, website into a you know, particular language. Um, gearing up to take international payments, and those kinds of things. Um, um, it can be used for be used for international marketing media, including digital media. So um, social media, a lot of companies are using that. But again, making sure that it's targeted for that particular uh, foreign market that you want to get into. It can be used for airfare. Um, if you're going to go to a trade show, if you're going to meet potential buyers. Uh, go on a trade mission and use for airfare. Um, there are some um, guidelines that you have to follow with that when you're traveling internationally. But um, um, And then it can be used for uh, trade show costs. And that would be trade shows. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be a trade show that's um, one that DBED or, or HDOA is organizing. It can be a trade show that you feel is um, you know, going to be useful for you, your company, for your product. So for trade show costs, um, for shipping products to and from a trade show. Next, um, for shipping sample products, and if you have a buyer that comes by on the booth, if you're at one of these shows and they say, well, I don't want to place a whole order, but I'd like to, you know, can you send me some samples? Uh, it can be used for that. Um, the top point, um, say gold key service, what we're talking about in general actually is the US commercial service. If you're not familiar with them, they are part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Um, the U.S. Commercial Service, they have offices in um, embassies and consulates around the world, and their job is to help U.S. companies do business in that particular country. So uh, they do have, um, have fees for their services, uh, cost recovery fees. So funds from us that can be used for that, can be using those, those services. Um, it can be used for compliance testing if you have a product, a food product, and maybe a skincare product. Um, in order to be sold in Japan, it's going to have to go through, it's going to have to be certified. You may have to have it go through certain um, testing. So, um, and that can be um, expensive. So, funds can be used for that. Um, it can be used for other things, for research, um, tax credit insurance premiums. Um, if you attend our export financing workshop on June 22nd, I think it is, um, you'll learn more about the import export, export import bank. And that's where this can come. You can buy foreign buyer credit reports in case you want to sell to somebody, but you're not sure about you know this, this company. Um, there are services 
Um, U.S. Commercial Service does that, and there are also other private services that can do that. And then um, last, consultancy services to help you develop a market strategy. But this is actually that last one is really um, with, uh, it has to be um, approved by SBA because they want to make sure that it's not um, a duplicative service, something that the U.S. Commercial Service would already um, offer. I think that, so, sorry, I know that's a, this, it's a lot of information. Um, we do have our website, invest.hawaii.gov, and under the exporting tab, you can get all of this information. But if you're interested, the first thing you would do is go to the registration and register online. There's no cost to register. There's no obligation to participate in any of the activities. It just gives us information about your company. And then at least, at the very least, we would put you in touch with one of our partner organizations and you can, you know, talk with them. Um, I don't think we can go to the next slide. Well, that this is kind of tips the process. Um, you can go to the next slide. And that's um, my uh, information. I also have business cards out on the you know, table outside. And then there's lots of information. But like Rob said, you'll get copies of um, all of the slides that we just have. So. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> I'd like to, I'm just going to bring up uh, the website for a second. And uh, if there's anything you want to point out on your invest.hawaii.gov. Here's registration over here on the right. If you go to invest.boy.gov, it'll put you at a landing page uh, and you just click on the exporting tab and you'll find high step here. And uh, and um, the CBIB and Easy ID is under the helping business um, tab if you're looking for um, Easy and the CBED, You can easy. get more information there. First, Although, Rob, did you want to talk a little bit about so that? while we have this open, I'd like to talk just briefly about my organization. That, um, we're all volunteers for this Hawaii Pacific Export Council. Uh, that we're one of 61 district export councils in the U.S. And I'm going to uh, blow our my own horn, our horn here, and say we won the District Export Council of the Year Award a few years ago, which was great for us because we're just this little district export council out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and we're going up against councils like Inland Empire and uh, New York and things like that. So it was really great for us. But um, what I wanted to point out, Jamie alluded to a little bit, and why I'm being sort of adamant about recording this uh, session is that we have a library of these seminars now going back several years here. Um, if you go to YouTube and just search for Hawaii Pacific Export Council or at HPEC, um, you'll find this archive of uh, all of our videos. And as Jamie mentioned, some of them are country specific, like say exporting to Vietnam, but some of them are topic specific. Uh, let's say um, uh, export financing for Hawaii companies, which we have another session coming up soon. We have an annual program we do at the beginning of the year called Export University 101. Um, it's a roughly four hour session. I, I know a lot of you just swallowed your tongue hearing that, but uh, it's fun to uh, attend and you, you, don't, you can sit and listen in the background and we go through about six different topics at a very high level like finance and logistics and what have you. But I think that this is um, a great archive of things you can start to go through, uh, look at uh, topics that might be of interest to you, and then you can come to our future events with better questions to ask and what have you. Uh, our, our website is here at um, uh, hawaiiexportsupport.com. And um, let me bring up it. Oh, yeah, we have a, a export guide that we've developed. Um, thank you for bringing that up because we put a lot of work into this and I, I forget about it uh, sometimes. But it's um, a very detailed PDF. Uh, we're actually work, uh, oh, well, we're working on an update of it now. Uh, I encourage you to go look at it and download it when you have time. It's very specific to Hawaii 
And um, one other resource I'd like to show you, you are free to use uh, from my website is a um, export plan template over here. If you just go to asiasalesmanager.com, I'll make sure this is working properly uh, when you download it. But there's an export plan template in PDF here that you can download and start to fill in and complete and try to go through some of those sections that are in there. And if you have any questions, just feel free to contact me by uh, telephone or text or, or email. I'll very briefly bring up a quick presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the Hawaii Pacific Export Council, and we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We're actually a quasi offshoot of the US Department of Commerce. And by statute, the executive secretary of our nonprofit is a US commercial service officer. He's in Honolulu. His name is John Holman. And for export related activities, I think he's a very critical contact for you because he is the window into all of these. U.S. commercial service officers that are in the embassies and consulates around the world that um, Jamie had referred to. And I've met, in my career, I've met countless uh, commercial service officers and, um, and commercial service employees in, in markets around the world. And they, I can say without hesitation, they're all very dedicated people. Um, most of the staff are longtime staff. Let's say, for example, you're working with um, the U.S. Embassy in Singapore and the commercial service, they'll have an officer there who changes uh, roughly every three years. And then that, that person will move to you know, Guatemala or Zaire. They'll be put somewhere. But the, the local staff stay there for many, 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 many decades usually. And they develop strong local contacts in various industries. And so they're, they're very excited to help you. They want to help you. Their key performance indicators are based on helping you. So it's um, it's really a great program. And I, I strongly suggest you get into that. Um, anyway, all of our board members at the Hawaii Pacific Export Council are um, appointed and vetted, uh, uh, nominated by the US Commerce Secretary. We serve um, three-year terms and then we can be renewed um, uh, as long as we're still actively involved in the um, uh, exporting environment. So we don't just help Hawaii companies, we help companies from Pacific Islands uh, like Guam, uh, Saipan, American Samoa. Um, but of course, uh, we, do, we do a tremendous amount of activity for Hawaii. And so the high step program that Jamie talked about, that's simply dedicated to Hawaii companies. There are step grants that are given to CNMI and Guam, uh, and they do what they want with it, but sometimes they bring in HPEG to help them implement their um, export and, and training programs. This is me. And then I put John Holman, uh, the commercial service officer, I put his contact information here. Um, so that you'll have it. And again, these PDFs will all be in a shared um, folder that uh, that we can use. One thing I thought um, I, I was remiss to say is we really should thank Robbie Melton for helping putting this program together. So thank you very much. She did. We I contacted her many months ago and said we would, you know, now that the pandemic's over, we'd like to come over to Kauai and do a Kauai-based program and help uh, potential exporters on Kauai. And um, we kind of threw that in Robbie's lap and she put together this wonderful program with a bunch of other speakers. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, I, we also have to thank uh, DBED uh, because we get a grant from them every year that allows us to do all these seminars and create the videos and do the one-on-one -on -one, um, company mentoring sessions. And, and with that, uh, certainly we follow on the thanks to SBA where the I, uh, step grant comes from originates in Washington, DC. So thank you very much to those organizations. Um, I think with that, I'm finished with HPEC stuff and we can move on to, unless there's any 
questions or comments about what we do. Okay. Great information. And as Jamie had mentioned that I do help with people trying to do their exports or expand. Um, so I'm happy to do that. So our next speaker is Wayne Leigh-Gon and Cindy Matsuki from Innovate Hawaii. And uh, they'll talk about all their different programs that help manufacturers other tech companies. Hi guys. So just warning, there's two ways at HCDC, so I'm the other way. There's uh, Wayne Inouye, my boss, he's, uh, he's the MNP Center Director. I'm the MNP Program Manager there. Um, for our slides, I'm just going to talk about the three main things, the takeaways from our presentation. I'm going to go over first um, an overview of what Innovate Hawaii is. Then we'll go over, Cindy's going to go over our Hawaii SBIR program, which is focused more on R&D. But if you guys are interested, for no companies, you know, we recommend um, reaching out to Cindy. And then the last one that I'm going to close with is our Manufacturing Assistance Program, which is a grant program um, using the state funds. So at a high level, at the top is HCDC. HCDC is the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation. Um, our mission, we're a state agency. We're actually uh, attached to VBIT, so we're, we're, we're grateful to be Jamie and Mark guys. Um, our mission is to help diversify the economy uh, by growing the tech and manufacturing industry. Innovate Hawaii specifically uh, is a program of HCDC. We focus on manufacturing piece. So I work with a lot of manufacturers. Uh, I administer the manufacturing grants. Uh, and at the same time, we're also part of what's called the MEP National Group. MEP is short for the Manufacturing Extension Partnership. So what this means is, as you can see on the bottom, it's kind of small, but there's a center like ours in every state and Puerto Rico, so 51 in total. And all we do is help small, medium-sized manufacturers grow their business. All right, next slide. Uh, some of the ways that we do this here locally, uh, again, uh, Jamie sort of mentioned production efficiency, scaling up. Food safety and quality is a big one. Um, the pandemic, a lot of people wanted to get into Costco. We help a lot of companies with their food safety audits, food safety plan development. So if you're interested in getting to Costco, Walmart, Sam's Clubs, um, Safeway, all, all the big national chains, they have very strict requirements on food safety. We can help assist you with the training and certification, uh, like FDA, uh, or FISMA uh, FISMA for general controls for human food uh, is one example. Um, Global Food Safety Initiative <clears throat> is, is another one that we can help with. But the way I think about it is if you want to get to the larger store and there are certain requirements to meet, we can help you get there. Um, we through our network, we, we utilize uh, a list of consultants that we've vetted, uh, and then they help you put together what you need those requirements. Um, again, our focus is training. Uh, we do some direct service implementation, but our, our main goal, our goal is to help local manufacturers gain the knowledge and skills so they can grow their business, succeed here in Hawaii, and expand into larger markets. Right? Um, we could do the work for you, maybe it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, once we leave, you know, our goal is to make sure that you just have the tools you need to continue where you left. Right? Um, scaling up, if anyone's interested in looking at equipment or, you know, automating their process, uh, again, we have services that, that provide that. Uh, cybersecurity is mainly, I think, right now for DOD, if you are a supplier for the Department of Defense, they do have strict requirements on uh, certain levels of cybersecurity that you need. Um, DBA also has a, a similar program. We usually help with more on the assessments uh, side of things. Quality management sort of relates to safety. I mean, I'm sort of mentioning food a lot because I think in Hawaii we have about last count like over 500 manufacturers. Over 40% of that is food, food and beverage, is say. Um, so, so that's why all of our, our services are tailored towards food. We do have you know experts that are you know good in safety and product development. Um, the workforce development aspect is is kind of new. Um, we are an approved trainer with the Department of Labor, so a lot of the trainings we offer um, can be subsidized by the Department of Labor, so reach out if you have specific needs. Um, we are working with um, companies to, to sort of streamline their onboarding process, so manufacturing specific, right, there's taking somebody just out of high school or out of college, you know, 
we have training programs that get them up to speed on the manufacturing side of things. There's a actual certification from the Society of SME, Society of Manufacturing Engineers. It's called the Certified Manufacturing Associate Certificate. Um, it covers the basic fundamentals of manufacturing. We have that available online. Um, right now, uh, we have a couple of companies that are sending some employees through. We have a high school on the Big Island that has been sending, I'll say, over 50 students to the program. Um, it's been very successful so far. It's good because it's self paced. You take it at your own pace, uh, of course, and then it's mobile, right? You don't have to be at work, you can be at home. You do it whenever you have a couple minutes, and it's, it's short modules. And again, the, the point is, you know, we're trying to adapt to the younger or more modern learners who don't like sitting at the front of the computer or sitting doing presentations for like hours and then just look over your head you forget the next thing. Right. So we're trying to address that. Um, next slide, bro. So next I'll bring up Cindy Matsuki. She's uh, the Hawaii SBR program manager. Uh, this is our interactive portion of our presentation. If you guys want to scan, it'll bring you to our website, uh, which has more info. Um, now let's think of I'm proud of you. We need more of this kind of interactive yeah. stuff. <laughs> yep. Should I go to the next slide? So I'm going to talk briefly about extra programs. I'm going to go over really quickly. There's a federal program, a state program. So the federal program is the SBR, the SBR, which is rebranding called America Seed Fund, which I think is a great name because that's what it is it's seed funding. Um, it's not a loan with your grant, so there's no payback, they don't take equity, so it's really flexible. I mean, you're doing any kind of R&D if you're creating anything innovative in your company, so I think this is a uh, wonderful thing to have um, There's 12 federal agencies that have this fund, so basically the, the money comes from many agencies that have extra $100,000 that they spend for R&D, they have to set aside a percentage for small business. So that's where this comes from. And it all adds up to over 4.2 billion set aside for small businesses to do this innovative work. And the goal is to grow innovative companies in the US. So next slide. Um it's been it's been getting bigger because I think agencies are new budgets are getting bigger. Um, yeah, and I think they, they support high risk R&D, um, so not like a bank loan. They want to see not incremental change, but big change. So that's what they support. Um, the federal program is a three phase program. The first phase is a smaller dollar amount, quarter time period, but if you have an idea, you can get a phase one, which I include your company now. And then if it's successful, the phase two is to build out your prototype, more money, and a longer period of time. And then the phase three is actually commercial money. So it doesn't come from the agency you're working with, but it comes from the customer. But the benefit of going through the SBR program for the customer is that they can sell quotes. So if you have a government customer and they want to purchase whatever you built through the SBR program, um, they don't have to bid it out for free. They can just go directly and say, I want that. And there's no limit to the money. So it's high um, These are all the participation, participating agencies. And so there's a, a wide variety of topics. And they cover all kinds of things. So even if you even have good writing pitches, I think you should take other chances. Um, so, like Jamie mentioned, you have to be a small business, and small business is under five hundred. So that's probably pretty important. Um, and it has to be a fifty one percent U.S. owned by a person, a citizen, and the work has to be majority of the work has to be done in the U.S. Um, again, like basically, it's a competitive. The federal program is nationally competitive, so it is a competitive grant. Uh, if you like high risk development, product development, and 
you just have to follow instructions really well. Like if you apply for any kind of grants, especially federal grants, you understand that like they have all these requirements. And each agency is different too. So depending on which agency you're applying with, they'll all have different requirements. So some are very specific on how you submit, and some are a little bit more flexible. So just make sure you follow all the instructions because they're pretty tricky and you can just disqualify you if you don't do something that they require. Yeah. Really yeah. So one reason why the SBIR program is really important that most people don't think about is they're talking about new innovation and new products. So even if you're a food manufacturer, if you have some new idea for a product that's never been on the market before, and it's going to take you trial and error and research to do it. SBIR program is a way to fund that research because it's pretty good money. So the very basic thing, one is what cost $150,000 and help you research that new product. And then if you get through phase one, you realize that it's a proof of concept, then you can go on to phase two, which is even more money. About I don't think one to two million, one to two million. I have one company I work with on the East Coast. They have an innovative medical device thing that had never been done before. They actually got three million dollars from that CIR So it's just thinking outside the box and figuring out a way to maybe, maybe do something. And I'm happy to help you do that. Yeah, I get to that. Is there any um, companies that have gone through this in you know, like you met someone in a walk through that like got all three phases that are really close to each other? The mushroom kind of so we kind of do it in my mind. Yeah, ASCM, ASCM. That was back when they were trapped. Yeah, I'm just looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah. And then there's a company that works with voice that they're testing out there as well. So they are on phase two. Yeah. Yeah. So we and play it more. Yeah. 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 So if you guys get the federal grant, I want to make sure that you guys know that there's a state matching grant. So the state will match for white companies that are awarded this federal SBI grant, the state has a matching fund. So this is to kind of help companies get to the next level. So if you have a phase one, you want to get to phase two. Um, the funding that we provide for the match is more flexible because the federal funding only allows for our engagement countries. The state fund will help you travel to meet the customer, buy equipment, hire people, stuff like that. So, and you can help, you can hire people to help you with the cancellation plan as well. Get yeah, IT, that kind of stuff. So to be eligible, it's similar, but it's more quality. So we have a match for all three phases, one, two, and three. The phase one, we pretty consistently have it in our budget. The phase two and three, we go to the ledge every year and we just copy for that to be appropriated to us to give out to companies. And this year, we were successful for the match. We got um, two million to match these two and threes. Um, you have to be registered as a business in Hawaii. You have to do the majority of the work here in Hawaii. HC compliant, Wayne is gonna go over that a lot. But that's like the biggest hurdle I think sometimes for people is to be compliant. Basically, it's to have all your business stuff in a row. If you don't, sometimes you want some money. But to award you the money, you have to be If you are even considering that or working with the state at all, it's really different. So there's a website. Yeah. And I don't want to forget to mention for phase zero that this is your first time applying for um, an SBIR, the federal grant. You can apply for a phase zero to HPBC. It's a reimbursable 
So if you hire somebody to help review or help revise your proposal, we'll reimburse up to three thousand. So you know whatever you can go grant it. So that's just to help companies to get a better proposal and increase your chance of getting the one the better for yes. So you just need to have proof that you submitted your phase one for the federal application and it was worth it. And then we'll be able to Yeah, so don't forget it. <laughs> Um, and this is just more services that the employee provides to free health plan services. So they actually will help our FAR companies with some of the specialization or like when they have problems. If you need to build a prototype and you help scaling up to three commercial basis, we'll help you with that too. And so if you are interested at all in the federal grant, let us know and we can help. I, I didn't know about this. That's a, no, that's a great, that's a great program, right? Basically reimbursing you to get help to do your, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah. So these are some of the white companies that have received the federal grant and the matching grant. So a little bit about Martech companies, but I did want to point out Small Grain Barns. So the owner of Small Grain Barns, he was a recycler and he would pick up all this stuff. Organic waste. So he wanted to see if there was something he could do with it. So he thought, oh, maybe I can try growing mushrooms like as a product. So he applied for an SBI with the Department of Life. And they, they gave him a grant to start. And so he tested, like, how does he sterilize the waste? How does he process it so that he can go? And he was successful. He was able to go with it. And so now he runs small kind farms, which is what part of the That is really so, cool. Yeah. And so I think there's, like, if you look at the agencies, um, like DOD or NASA, I feel like they cover a lot of things. Like they think NASA is just space, but they need they need health stuff. They need ag. They need they cover a lot of different topics. So I would I wouldn't just think of space, but like DOD is they need all kinds of things too. There's energy, water, ag, not just like the things. Then some of the granting agencies have only mushrooms. So if you think you have a good idea that is relevant to say I have I think I have one of then you just submit it. Yeah. Oh. Um, so these are some resource sites. SBR.gov is the overall federal grant site. Um, Grants.gov, I believe, has opportunities. And Turbo FBI is they've been around for a couple of years, but they're like Turbo Tax or Career SBI. So basically, it's a platform to kind of handle and walk you through the process and make sure you're not just taking steps that you automatically qualify in when you submit. Um, so those are the resources and things to do now. Um, do you look for business plan? Or like, how are you going to commercialize? I think that's the whole goal. Like, if you're successful with your research, how are you going to take this product? And because they want to buy it and they want you to be a successful company. Um, so, those are the things in the application. And we see if you're going to buy So, I'm going to talk about the manufacturing assistance program again to so the interactive portion. Um, it'll bring you to our website that has more info. So right now, I'm just going to talk about the stats for this past fiscal year. So it already ended. We just closed out the program. But it'll be very similar. Uh, we're still unsure about the final amount. I think it's a million, but I have to confirm for FY24. So state fiscal year 24 starts July 1st. So, so it'll be coming out later this year. The application will open up probably September. Close out in December, which is what we did last year. So there's a 
Last year we had a million dollars in funding. The minimum grant we can award is fifteen hundred. The maximum is one hundred thousand. And the way we do it is, companies apply with simply one application, uh, and because the company can only get hundred once, one to the next one. And similar to our other pro um, Jamie's program, um, it is a reimbursable award. So that means the company will have has to spend and purchase the equipment first and then apply. And then the, the review committee, the map review committee determines the award amount. Um, there is a cap though, it's up to 20% of costs for qualified manufacturing expenses. Um, Again, the cap for that is one hundred thousand. So if you spend five hundred thousand on equipment, for example, you could apply for one hundred thousand. Uh, and then it has to be purchased, uh, meaning final payment paid off on or after July first. So we we'll probably stick with that over the next fiscal year. Next time. So qual what qualifies? So four buckets, right? So purchase of manufacturing equipment. So you know, scaling up piece. If you guys are looking at equipment, it gets purchased. Equipment recently, you guys would be eligible to apply. It also covers training on the manufacturing equipment. So, a lot of times when you buy large pieces of manufacturing equipment, you either have to fly up to inspect it, do what's called a factory acceptance test before you ship it and install it in your facility. Or sometimes, if you're lucky, you have a qualified technician, they can send one with the equipment, help you install it, and do the initial setup and, uh, and, and, and uh, training. Your employees. So those costs could be reimbursed under this grant also. Uh, the bottom two, um, energy efficiency uh, as it relates to your manufacturing process. So this doesn't this does not include PV for solar because that's energy generation. But a good example is again like that I use all the time is motors. Most motors typically stay on as running one speed, but if we're upgrading them to variable speed motors, there's energy savings in doing that. Uh, but we would need to see the study that sort of says that by doing this, you'll be becoming more energy efficient. Uh, the last one is a feasibility study for uh, your facility, where it's expansion or if you're moving into a new facility. And then just, just some additional info. I mean, usually vendor training from the equipment vendor that was, is normally covered, but let's say you needed to find another expert uh, that's not associated with. The equipment vendor. Uh, that's where you would ask you know, to provide qualifications. You just want to make sure that they're doing equipment training. So food safety training does it count towards this? We have an example. It's just anything related to the equipment and the use of it. And, and again, the last uh, the last one again is uh, energy efficiency and feasibility studies. You know, it has to be part of your manufacturing process, and then feasibility studies are related to your facility, not your product development. Next slide. So again, um, that all the applications are reviewed by a review committee. So I just help I just help organize things and I send it off to the committee for review. If you guys have questions on the application, um, email me. Um, you know, gonna call us if it's pretty easy. Um, important uh, is that because this is a state funded program, uh, the grants are for economic development. So what the state's looking for is company growth. Job growth, job creation, potential, those type of things. So when you're filling out the application, those are things that I urge everyone to focus on. Don't just say you're buying equipment to replace an old one. It's it's acceptable, but it doesn't score you points when it comes to the economic economic impact or potential. Next slide. Um, Hawaii Compliance Express. This is very important for anything that has to do with the state. Right, so the state, in order to give you money, you have to be compliant with all the state rules and regulations. So if you go to this website, uh, you can look up your company if you're already registered. It'll tell you if you're compliant or not. Uh, the four agencies that determine your compliance are the IRS, Department of Labor, uh, DCCA, and then um, the Department of Tax. So don't contact us or, or Jamie. If you have questions about ACE, you have to contact the respective departments to they determine your eligibility. But we're telling you this now because this process is out of our control. But this is the one, at least for this past year, uh, I think about 19 companies submitted incomplete applications because there were not anyone. 
So for map, just this a rundown. Last year we received 85 applications, only 26 were awarded. So it's very competitive. Uh, the way the way it works is you know all the applications are reviewed, and then the, the ones that score at the top get awarded until there's no more funding available. So again, the importance of clearly explaining how how the grant and the equipment that you're buying or whatever expenses you have will benefit the company. Next time. So this is an example. This is not ABC store. They just made this up. It's called ABC company. Okay. But what we're looking for is this for your compliant. So again, if you're compliant, you're eligible for state funding. If you're not compliant, just contact these four here. And, I, and then start the process now because um, IRS, for example, takes a long time. Department tax sometimes takes a long time. Um, we've had companies start in September and then not get compliant in December. So it's only three months. And then they were in with the program. So if you're interested in this program, if you think you're, you're purchasing equipment or have purchased equipment and people were buying, check this out now, start it now. So now we're just going to yeah, on the bottom here, it'll tell you if you're not compliant or not. So, depending on the point, next time. Yep, so that's it. This is our general email for anything related to the grant. Um, again, this is notification. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, for Hawaii, last year, four companies were awarded. Yeah. 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 Well, we have a sec. Uh, the country needs bathroom because they closed down um, some of the doors. So there's a bathroom inside. So you go straight out there here, turn sort of left, bathroom on this hallway right over here. Uh, and if you need to leave earlier or anything, there's uh, you just go out the doors. There's the right of the way they call it gates. We're locked down. <laughs> we still have a few more speakers. We have money coming. So we're really excited to have Carol Montes is going to talk about the new ICAP grant program. Ivory from KFCU is going to make a big announcement. And then Nate's going to close us out. Sorry, I have to leave early. But for those of you who don't know about SBDC, um, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about that real quickly. So we're a program of the Small Business Administration, like so many of these, uh, like high stuff is funded by um, uh, SBA, SBIR programs and program of SBA. And we are funded through the University of State of Hawaii at Hilo. So we have like four layers of bureaucracy. <laughs> so it's tough. Okay, next slide. So we have centers all around the state, not just here in Hawaii. And if you haven't been our office, we're right behind the old post office. So our services are no cost. So that's one of the great things about what we do. So you can come to us with any kind of business problem, not personal problems, please, but <laughs> business problem. And we will talk to you. It's completely confidential. So your neighbor's not gonna know about what you're doing. Um, unless we tell them. And then next slide. So a lot of people think we're only startup services, but we do a lot in startup. If you even just have an idea, you don't even have to know what it is. Just like, oh, I think I want to do something in this area. We'll sit down with you and help you figure it out. I'm a strategy person, so I do the strategy of how are you going to get from your idea to your final product. We do business plan review. We don't write the business plans, but we can help you figure out what those elements are. We also help with financial projections. We do business registration. So a lot of people don't ever pay anybody to register your business. It crushes my heart when you pay $600 for something you and I can do for three and five minutes. And so nobody do that, please. And then we also have people with employment. A lot of times people start out 
as sole proprietors and then as their job goes on, they're like, oh, I need an employee. So we help create new jobs. We also help if you're an existing employer and you have employee problems, we also help with that. Next. So we also do growth and sustainability. Some of my clients have been in business three, five years and they're looking to expand or they're looking to sunset. So we also help in that. So we do a lot of things. We do a lot of work in manufacturing. So we do a lot of work with Innovate Hawaii and helping people expand their product base. Next slide. So we also do financial services. So high step funding for that CVET. We talked about CVET. So the great thing is if you work with SBDC to get your loan, if you get turned down by some financial institution, you can either go to CVET or you can go to other financial institutions to look for funding. The other nice thing is one of the institutions I work with here, they know if you come to me and I helped you get ready for your loan, you're probably in a good standing. So that's where it elevates you to the top. So there are all different kinds of loans, as you can see on here, and I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I help you figure out how much you need, where you need to go to look for it. That's fine. So we help with the application assistance, not only for loans, but for grants. So if you're applying for a grant, even SBIR, we help review the grant application, see where the PUCAs are, and then help you figure that out. So we do all the different areas, financial projections. Everybody struggles with that. People don't really know, but I've been in the business of doing that for like 25 years. I hate to say that. It's not old, but <laughs> I've been working with companies to do that. So I help with that. Feasibility studies are generally if you're doing a large project. So millions of dollars. So most people in this area aren't there yet. Say that, it's like not there yet. So, um, and then we have the presentation assistance. So if you're gonna pitch in front of an investor or you have any other kind of business presentation, we also help with that. So these, you know, you can see we work with everybody. It doesn't really matter. One of the differences I think on Hawaii from my counterparts is we work with nonprofits. So I've helped a lot of nonprofits get started and run and we do any industry. So these are my top industry sectors. So people are always surprised when I say manufacturing. They're like, what is what manufacturing? I'm quiet, but we have a number of good manufacturing companies. We have people sitting right over here, quite picky, one of the greatest. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of them. So my my goal is that Kauai is going to be manufacturing to be our leading industry coming up. So I'm working on that. Retail, even in a downturn economy, people are trying to start retail shops, which is great. Non-business services, health-related, you know, with the pandemic, is health-related to food and food prep. You know, because we're an agricultural island, that's going to be really important. So we also do other services. One of the biggest things we do is when you're starting out, you need to figure out how big is your industry. Because if you're creating a company and you only have 10 buyers, you know, that's really not a company. So you want to know how large your market is. We have a librarian who's really good. And she can help not only look at the national trends, she looks at the state trends, and she looks at the local trends. She's amazing. So we do that. So some of these studies would normally cost you anywhere from $2,000 to $15,000. So we can help with that. We also get you connection to read key resources like Innovate Life, DBED, and then we do business workshops. And then um, we have to get measured because we have to report to SBA what we do. So we're looking at how many companies that I helped or entrepreneurs that I helped to start a business, how many people had sales growth, how many got capital infusion, jobs created or saved. 
So we're here to help you in the long term. So we're just not a answer one question. We help people along the way. And sometimes I help people for maybe two months and then maybe a year later they come back and go, hey, I need some more help. So we're just an ongoing service that help people. Right. Yes. So these are some of our partners here locally that we have, that we work with. We're really pleased to have um, this relationship with all these organizations. Thanks. Oh, so every third Wednesday, we do small biz talks at the Alacoco shop. So if you haven't been to the Alacoco shop, you want to go. It's amazing. So it's a one retail shop. It's a dream of a young lady. Or instead of you having to open a store, you can become a member and you place your products in her store. And then anything you sell, it goes directly to you, just like if you were a regular retailer. So on the third Wednesday, we have this talk. So coming up in June, we're going to have an insurance um, broker come and talk about the various types of insurance for businesses because a lot of people don't know what they need. Different types of insurance. Uh, last month, we had Melly Wraps come and talk about selling outside of Hawaii and how you connect to distributors or sales agents. So it's free to come, to so just show up at the courtyard. So that's fun. And these are some of my success stories though. So this is a nonprofit. They do um, trades. So they actually teach young people who aren't meant for school. So if you in construction trades, it's an apprenticeship program. They actually get paid, which is really cool. Why Sweet Shop, the cool thing about them, they were in the Hawaii Venture Capital <laughs> Association People's Choice finalists this year, which is pretty cool. So um, here's our website. So to sign up to, to get services, you just register on our website and that's my contact information. And then there's information outside the door. So appreciate you guys. I'm gonna let Carol take it over and talk about hers. And thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. And I know we've got four more speakers and they're gonna be great. Carol, which what's the name of your presentation? Uh, it's ICAP. Okay. So my name is Carol Montes and I'm with the Hawaii Green Infrastructure Authority and we can start from the um, place. So I'm going to talk to you about the HICAP program. This is a federal program um, funded by the U.S. Treasury under the um, State Small Business Credit Initiative. And I'm going to talk to you about the collateral support program and the participation, um, the loan participation program. And these two are administered by the HEI. So the high cap collateral, the high cap collateral support program. The objective is to to help small businesses obtain funds to start or grow their operations. And we want to help these small businesses because it helps us uh, retain and create jobs, and it also generates. That is a tax revenue. Um, the program provides credit enhancement to help reduce the bank's credit risk. And by providing um, this collateral, we also help the small businesses access um, to capital. Um, we believe that this program has a lot of potential to help uh, different businesses in different industries across, across the state. So, all islands, we have been able to. Uh, to help different businesses in the island, in Maui, and Oahu. We can go. 
So since this is a federal um, program, we need to review for the uh, eligibility. Some of the things we're looking at is are listed here. So the business must be headquartered in Hawaii. The borrower um, should not have more than 750 employees, this includes any full-time, part-time, or temporary employees. The maximum loan amount shouldn't be $20 million, and the loan term shouldn't be more than 10 years. So any um, term of 10 years or less, 10 years or less is fine. And we can provide cash collateral for up to 20% or $1 million, whichever amount is less. Um, any small businesses. Any small business is eligible under this program, but we really want to encourage any minority, any woman, etc., business to take advantage and apply for this program. Next slide, please. We're also going to be looking at the uh, loan purposes. So these are some of the um, eligible loan purposes. So any startup costs, franchise fees, any purchase, construction, renovation, or tenant improvements. Business acquisition and extension or any equipment uh, purchases are legitimate purposes under the Python collateral. So, how does it work? So, the banks or any financial institution interested in becoming a participating lender under the Python collateral program can become a participating lender, and this is done by doing an application and an agreement. So once the bank is a uh, participating lender under the high tax collateral program, they can um, have their borrowers apply to the program. So the bank will conduct the normal underwriting process and this is where the collateral cap will be identified. They will talk to the borrower. If the borrower wants to apply for the program, they can submit the application and any uh, documentation required. So once we receive the application, we're gonna review and um, make sure that the borrower and the loan meet the CPI requirements. And we're gonna let the borrower know, we're gonna let the bank know so they can uh, uh, close the loan. So once the loan is closed, we're gonna deposit the funds in a collateral deposit account to support the loan made. Hopefully this is not too um, confusing. Uh, on our part, it's an easy process. Once we receive the application, we wanna um, let the borrower know uh, within five days um, if, they're available, if they're eligible or not under this program. So, yeah. <laughs> so the high tax ladder, the high tax loans program, this is a participation uh, program, and the objective of this program is to um, fund it, to provide the loan market loan capital to any catalytic projects in different industries. Uh, so the financing may be done in the form of a direct loan, a participation loan, or a supporting program. So we do our co-lending with any social impact funds, any bank or private lenders. And like I said before, um, one of the requirements for the participation program is that the project has to be catalytic. One of the uh, examples listed here is community solar project. But uh, it can be any industry, really. Uh, it could be manufacturing, uh, technology, agriculture. But it has to be it has to meet the catalytic um, part. So we have um, a committee that decides if the project is catalytic or not. And so that's a high level overview of both the collateral and the ICA loans uh, participation program. Um, if you go to the next slide, you can find the email for um, the high tech loan program and the phone number. So, any questions, you can contact us.
Questions, anyone? Please. So if a company is interested, would you recommend that they email that like that specific email? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't actually have a, a presentation. I'm going to be really quick. Okay. But I'll stand close to oh, I'm sorry. Your Excuse recording. me. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Ivory Lloyd. I am the Social Innovation and Entrepreneurship um, Program Manager at Kauai Federal Credit Union. Um, so we're a local um, community development financial institution. So when you're talking about um, local banks, lenders, especially with that like community development focus, that is essentially what we are all about. So I'm going to talk to you later. <laughs> That's a really exciting program. Um, and I'm really just here to talk about, um, we recently just, we just um, started our own business loan program. So we have, we, in the past, we haven't had any business products and we've been kind of holding Robbie off. Um, we do recommend like all, anybody that wants to like open an account with us, that they go through Robbie, then they come to us. Um, and there's a few different options. So we have a small business loan that, again, is like a very small uh, $50,000 or, or, um, or less. And that can be for like startup businesses because what we've seen is a lot of businesses that um, are starting up, it's hard for them to get to get initial capital. So that's one of the programs that we're trying to launch and, and get out there. And then as well as a commercial loan um, and a uh, product for us. So we actually, the ideal thing that you guys can do um, for us, because we're a local bank, we have two branches. We have one in Kilauea and we have one in Mahui. Um, we're here. Our main mission, again, is to like serve our community, meet you where you're at. So whatever it means, like in order in order to like help build this ecosystem to support our small businesses, that's why we're here. And that's why I'm excited to hear about all the different programs, because a lot of people that come to us, you know, we end up sending them to to um, Nate, to Robbie, um, and just the more that we know that we can support them, the better. So um, we have a great loan department. And so if you guys are interested in anything or you can just like learn about what we do. Um, I didn't mention that we recently bought Otsukas and Kapa'a, if you don't already know, we're gonna be building that into Economic Resiliency Center. And that truly, that's where like my, our social innovation hub will really come into play and like bringing in these partners. So when you guys fly over to, from Oahu, we can bring you in, we can say, okay, every third Monday of the month, we're gonna have CBED, DBED, all these people come in and talk about the program and like sit down with you, we'll bring in whatever those resources are. Um, so that's kind of gonna be our main mission and it will be down the road, but in the interim, I'm really excited to like kind of just meet you guys and, and, and start building that ecosystem up, so. Can you tell us your website so we can it's just- It's get... Cool. Yeah, so a lot of our information is on there. More about OSU you guys. Um, the build out will be a while, but um, we still are doing what we do. We're on the North Shore. Robbie didn't mention that on Monday, she's actually gonna come up to our branch because we're closed on Mondays um, in Kilauea. And she's gonna do office hours from 11 to one for our North Shore businesses. I live on the North Shore. So for me to come out to Lahui is really a mission. So I could have walked more than I come oh. to town, <laughs> anywhere past Lahui. So um, just to like have that resource. So for those of you guys on the North Shore, if you want to do that, we'll try to make that a regular thing where people can come in and, and have those services available. Um, and yeah, you can learn more about us, our social impact and the uh, things that we can do for you. And that's all I really want. Oh, wonderful. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you yes. very much. Yes. Okay. So I thought I said, are you a business bank? So how does that work? We are a credit union. Thank so you. we have, but we have um business products. Mm -hmm. But we, I would say it's not like to the full extent at the moment that that a bigger business would have would need. So I'm just going to be really honest with you. I, we have checking savings accounts. Awesome. Like if you're just getting started, like where your bank, um, if you, I would say that like, we're probably the ones that are going to help you if you're like just getting started and we'll help you get those resources and we'll build off of that. But at the moment we just have like our small loans, um, our bigger commercial loans, which are more like, you know, if you want to buy a property, the like bigger equipment. So that's going to be, um, that's something that we offer as well. And then like the small business, like they're, we're calling them micro loans. 
And I know you guys are a love hockey partner and we always are grateful for everything you do. But um, I would say, yeah, it will be, we'll be ready for you guys down the road. Any other questions? Thank you so much. As long as it's as long as it's legal. <laughs> I do not have a presentation, but I have some pass outs. Um, my name is Mark Carrillo. I'm the president of the Y Chamber of Comics. I'm really happy to be with you here today. Um, There you go. Thanks, Thanks sir. Um, so how many of you have heard of the Chamber of Commerce of the Y Chamber of Commerce? All right, most everyone. Um, that is great. So unlike a lot of the programs you heard today, uh, from today, um, we don't really uh we're a little bit or a membership organization. Businesses join um, the Y Chamber, um, and in return, they get a whole slew of benefits. Um, I think the first and most important one is networking. Um, and so the value of networking is really can't be understated. Um, and it comes right down to it. Um, you know, you don't know what people in the room, um, the people that are fellow business owners, um, what they're going through. It's actually really similar to the challenges they go facing. How do you find employees? How do you keep employees? How do you write? Um, Gain the resources we need as a business in order to, to thrive and grow and, uh, and do all of that. And so um, we have a lot of events throughout the year. Um, and we like to entertain you at these events. And so, uh, for instance, in a few weeks, uh, no, a few weeks, the good thing is a few weeks away is next week, uh, we have a luncheon with Governor Green. It's going to be up in the night at home. Um, and so, really looking forward to that event. Um, we have a, a luncheon with the mayor of July. We have um, I'm actually going to publish in Buda in August. Um, and so what happens is people come together um, and they get to network for a little bit, talk to each other, uh, support each other as fellow business owners and entrepreneurs, um, and then get to hear from someone um, who can, quite frankly, impact their business in a lot of ways. Um, and they get to ask questions, right? So another day is going to take your questions next week. Um, the computer will do the same. The mayor will do the same. Um, and so it's a great opportunity um, for people to hear from the leaders in our community, um, as well as learn from each other. Um, and so that networking piece is really, really important. Um, we also help you provide visibility uh, for your business, right? Through social media, um, through other means. We have a, a newsletter that uh, goes out to over a thousand people on the island, which is, you know, the island has 75,000 people or so. And it's more than one percent of the whole population of this island get the email from the Chamber of Commerce once a week. Um, and you get to put things in there about your business. It can be about your products and services, about events that you're doing, um, you know, whatever you want. You get to put your flyer in there um, and, and people read it. Um, the open rate is, is quite substantial. Um, and it's really great because you get to learn a lot as well through that newsletter um, about the things that are going on in our community um, and, and whatnot. Um, Next thing we do is um, a lot of this is such a dirty word, uh, but we do a lot of lobbying, right? And so uh, when it comes to advocacy and the work that we do on behalf of the business community, we do at the state level, the county level, and all the way to Washington, D.C. Um, in fact, right after the governor's luncheon, um, the next day I fly to Washington, D.C. Uh, for a big event that we do every year called Hawaii on the Hill. Um, this is the first in person Hawaii on the Hill since COVID. Um, and there will be hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of business leaders from all across the state, um, including Waikiki and, and others from, from our island um, that will be there um, really to help showcase what's happening in our state to leaders at the national level, um, but then to also, quite frankly, um, help our senators and our Congress people um, really do their work throughout the year because flying on the hill has a lot of good roads and colleagues. Um, and so we'll have a big event, Taste of Hawaii, uh, where all of our different manufacturers will be giving our products and you know 
all the folks you see on CNN every night or Fox News, wherever you watch, um, they'll be showing up. And, um, you know, um, it's a great opportunity to showcase your company. Um, you know, Chuck Schumer always enjoys his family's be every year. Um, I think so, yeah, it's a, it's a really great opportunity. Um, a lot of businesses do attend that. Um, but we do a lot of that advocacy work. So when there are tax issues, right? So, you know, we did a lot of work on ag land tax issues in the past few years. Um, you know, what have you at the county level, at the state level, you know, we're always um, advocating for different things that are advocated for businesses. Um, you know, in one thing, example, I'll give you, I think that um, a lot of people really just assume that the chamber is all about the employer and not about the employees. Um, that is not the case. Our mission is about prosperity for everyone, um, no matter what level they are. Um, and so we actually came out in favor of an increase in the minimum wage last year, um, which is uh, pretty unheard of. Uh, but all the chambers did it across the state uh, because the times have changed, right? It was uh, inflation had gone up, uh, the, the cost to attack employees had gone up. Um, and so we worked really diligently. Uh, there were some people that wanted the, the rate to be up here, some people who didn't want the rate to change, but we really advocated for something in the middle. Um, and that's where we ended up. Um, and so, so that was pretty good as well. So we are a voice of business throughout the wide. Um, we do educational events throughout the year. Um, one of our most popular ones is our employment law seminar. So for a lot of small businesses, like we don't have an HR department. Um, but so come to the seminar once a year, it's in October, um, and we have uh, folks from Honolulu, um, from the Focus and Caps come over uh, and provide just the, the latest and greatest in what's happening in HR law. And believe it or not, you might think that you can do it once and you don't have to go next year. Law and employment law changes all the time. There's case law, there's legislation, uh, there are things that change. And so it's a really great opportunity to learn. Uh, and we do a lot of webinars. Uh, in those webinars, um, I'm probably going to say that, um, you know, so instead of having everything in person, right, we have to move to a hybrid model. Um, and so we're going to be doing some financial literacy webinars in the fall, uh, marketing and branding webinars in the fall. Um, and so just some various different things that can help you, um, when you don't have a lot of time, spend an hour, spend two hours, um, learn about these different things. Um, and, and you can attend these as a member or not a member. It's a little bit more expensive if you're not a member, um, but everyone is welcome because um, we're here to support all businesses, regardless of whether you participate in the chamber or not. Um, and then um, the last thing I'll say is uh, that we do provide a lot of credibility. So all the surveys show that if you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce, people think no highly of your business. Um, they think you're more credible. Uh, they think you are more likely to be active in your community and giving back, right? So a lot of people, they might love your product, but they'll love it even more if you know you're, you're involved in your community, you're active with your community, um, you're doing things to support your community, especially on a small island. Um, you know, it's important that we're all giving back, we're all contributing, um, and we're all doing what we can to make this a better place for everyone to live and work and raise a family and play and all of that. Um, and so I gave out sort of the why join the chamber. Um, all the prices are on the back. Um, if you are interested, uh, you can shoot me an email, mark at whychamber.org, super easy, um, and we can talk. Um, and if you think this might be right, they are sure you have questions, um, you will find that I am not someone who that gives a hard sell. Um, I think that if it's right fit, it's right fit. If it's not right fit, hey, we will, we will find ways to work together um, and get the rules. Um, and the second thing I passed out is our sponsorship opportunities. Um, and quite frankly, the reason I passed this out isn't because I think someone in this room can be like, hey, I want to be on the $10,000 sponsor tomorrow. Um, maybe, I think we talked about that too. Um, but there's a list of uh, a lot of benefits in here that the sponsors get um, that are also available to our members, but at cost. Uh, and so I thought you might be interested in sort of taking a look at these benefits. Uh, it's a really great way to get familiar with our programming. Uh, and uh, that. And so take a look at that at your leisure. Um, it's great to see a few familiar faces in here as well. Um, and so there are members of the chamber. Uh, I've been boss and like treasurer, um, Monica, um, Robert Neely. Uh, I took you as one of our sponsors. Uh, you know, it's, it's just great to see so many 
the other things. Does anyone have any questions? Am I the last one to go? No, nope. almost. All right. Yeah. Um, any questions? No. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. This is uh, Nate. Yep. All right, everybody. I'm Nate Prescott. I'm the business specialist for the county in the Office of Economic Development. Uh, so my whole job is just trying to help businesses in all different ways. Um, so there is a flyer out there that hopefully you guys grab. If not, grab one on the way out. Uh, but one of the things that I do is I go and I talk with businesses. I just go and visit, drop in with businesses, and uh, just talk story with them and try to figure out how things are going what issues keep them up at night and how we can help. And a lot of times there's somebody up, as I'm talking to someone, I'm like, hey, you should reach out to um, number four. Uh, you know, like there, usually there's someone on this list that I can refer you to and other businesses. From what I've found, um, everybody's working so hard these days that they don't have time to go do research. They don't have time to go figure out who can help our business. So uh, just by getting this conversation started, sometimes people are like, well, what about this issue that I'm having? Is there anyone that can help me with this? And, as you can see, there's a lot of resources available to apply businesses. So a lot of them are here today. There's even more out there and uh, a lot of them are free and willing to help. So I go out and talk to businesses, try to find them resources. Um, sometimes needs aren't being met with some of our uh, partners. And so uh, as, as the county, we start programs to try to address needs. Um, I keep data on all of my visits so that I can go back to the mayor and the council and tell them, like 50% of the businesses in this area are struggling with this thing. Like, we got to do something, you know? So we're building up that data so that we can um, start making some good change. Uh, I also work on a lot of long-term projects that are coming from the county, uh, just bringing the business perspective, and, you know, focusing on businesses, advocating for the businesses in these programs and projects that are going to be happening, um, just making sure that businesses are taken care of and that their needs are heard. So. Uh, if you guys need help, uh, I'd love to come visit you or if you just want to talk. And uh, and and besides this, there's even times where people will reach out and they're like, hey, Nate, my, uh, my business, like our property taxes went up like crazy this year. Can you help me figure out what's going on? Or we're trying to renovate and our permits, we're stuck in the permitting process. Can you help us? Um, I can't always solve all those problems, but I can get you in touch with the next step. I can help you get to the next step. And, uh, and pass it off. I'll make sure those people know that they're a priority. They need the help. They need to sit down and figure it out. You know. So, uh, so yeah. My whole thing is just trying to help businesses with whatever unique, interesting problem that you guys are facing. I'm here to help. Um, and please shoot me an email. Reach out. My phone number is on the the flyer, uh, so you guys can reach out to me. And uh, yeah, I'd love to help. That's the short and sweet of it. Uh, is there any questions for me or for the the group before we end it? All right, well, thanks everybody Thank for coming. Uh, it's been a great, great event, very informative. We've learned a lot. Um, like I said, the exits just got the doors um, on either side, wherever you're parked, so you can still get out. But yeah, thanks everyone for coming. I'll give a great time. Mm -hmm. Bye, Mark. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Great. Thank you to all of our attendees today. Thanks for, thanks for coming on.